guys, how's it going? It's Al. We got a week eight recap for you. I'm going to look at everything that happened on DraftKings during week eight on Sunday on the main slate. I did not play on FanDuel this week. I said on stream last week that I was probably not going to play FanDuel this week uh, because of the site issues that they had been having the previous weeks uh, other than the cage match, which I did play on FanDuel last week. So we'll go over the results to that. We'll go over the results that I had in tournaments as well. Uh, and we'll look at everything that happened. There were some places where I was right and where I was wrong on uh, on my article. We go over that every single week. We go over Best Buys. I know that some of you also had issues going over and finding Best Buys on ESPN. If I've tried to explain numerous times, and I will do it once again. The easiest way to find my Best Buys article is just to go to Google and search Best Buys Week Whatever. Best buys, week, whatever. That's all you really need to do. Uh, and if you do that, you will always find best buys. It works out that easily and that simply. So use that instead of trying to go to the site search. The site search doesn't always work out. So uh, that would be the way that I would say to do it. So let's go over best buys. Let's take a look at how I did in that article. There were a lot of injuries. A lot of things went sideways. A lot of weather that was affecting the way that we were building lineups yesterday and, and things we were doing. And some of the games that made a big difference and some of them it didn't. Uh, so let's go over it all and we'll see where I was right, where I was wrong, where I was lucky, where I was unlucky. Here it is. Like I said, the article gets posted every Thursday morning. Google for it. Much easier. Okay. Much easier. I had Aaron Rodgers in Best Buys this week. Uh, he went 27 of 41 for 291, three touchdowns, all of them to Devontae Adams. Uh, 23.54 DraftKings points. He was fine. Joe Burrow, another player that ended up in a really windy game. He still performed pretty well. 18.86 DraftKings points, which 3x his salary. Uh, 26 of 37 for 249 and two touchdowns. I think it would have been better or bigger if he had not had that issue. Jimmy Garoppolo was not good. Uh, very basically... 11 of 16 for 84 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, 2.76 DraftKings points, and then he got injured. And making it even worse, his backup comes in and does everything that we thought that Jimmy G was going to do the entire week leading up to this, which made it extra tilting for me because our read on the game and our read on the matchup was 100% correct. The wide receivers that we were playing, Bourne uh, and Ayuk, also exceeded their salary expectation. So tilt was off the charts here for me for Jimmy G. He just may be bad. Uh, I know that people are going to try and say that, well, maybe Seattle wasn't as bad a matchup as you we we're all making them out to be. No, they were exactly that bad a matchup and that exploitable. And Jimmy G was not able to do it. I, They're saying that it was an ankle injury. The ankle injury that was still bothering him from the past would have been bothering him all week in practice, and it would have been very clear that he couldn't plant or turn or throw or anchor. Maybe he just mentally is not ready to do it in games right now because there was no excuse for that. Josh Allen, another windy situation in Buffalo here. Uh, we talked to Sal before the game. He said that the wind was going to affect them. I came completely off of Josh Allen yesterday morning. He said they were going to be able to throw better than you think, but it's still going to be a major influencer on the, the way that the game is played. So we came off of Josh Allen. Hopefully you guys tuned into the anti-Tinkercast. 11 of 18, 154, no touchdowns, one pick. He did score on the ground, 10 rushes for only 23 yards, but he did get a touchdown. 13.46 DraftKings points is just not enough for 7K. Ryan Tannehill on the other side of that Cincinnati game, 18 of 30, 233 with two touchdowns, 18.32 DraftKings points. Uh, Hopefully you guys somehow got to Mahomes after watching the top stacks video later in the week as I thought that they were going to be a good low plate stack uh, for tournaments. And that is what ended up taking down. Congratulations to Mike Leone from Establish the Run who took down uh, with a Mahomes stack with Jets bringbacks after all this value popped later in the week. Took down the Thunderdome on DraftKings with that. Aaron Jones became an easy pivot. He did not play, became an easy pivot to Williams. So he ended up with 16 carries, 75 yards, six catches on six targets for 27 yards and 18.2 DraftKings points. Uh, I think this was going to be a smash no matter what it was, which uh, uh, no matter which running back was in play, hopefully you pivoted. And I think that you would have if you watched the, the rest of the content on Friday uh, and on Sunday morning, pivot to Williams there. Kareem Hunt 
is a place where I'm sure a lot of people are going to want me to take an L and I'm just not going to here, guys. This is uh, a good situation that I would make this same choice a hundred times out of a hundred. He was on his path to doing things well. This is a case where we got unlucky. 14 carries for 66 yards. That's 4.7 yards per carry. He uh, he had 16 carries, sorry, 14 carries. His team had 16 running back rushes. So he had well over 90%. He had like, you know, 85, 90% of the running back rushes on his team. He also had two catches on three targets. The problem was the Raiders were able to control the clock in Cleveland for 37 minutes of, of time of possession, they only got 22 minutes, did the Browns. They only ran 47 plays to the Raiders' 70 plays, which is an absolute nightmare. Uh, I was convinced that this game was going to be both teams kind of running the hell out of the ball, which would lead to less possessions than we would expect, but not a situation where one team would run 70 and the other would run 40. Hunt was not an issue yesterday. Uh, Hunt was at a great price, and we're going to keep attacking situations like this where we have a home favored running back who projects to get 20 touches in a normal sort of a situation, uh, gets the goal line work, gets used in the passing game, and has a fantastic matchup. The Raiders are still a very exploitable matchup. Kareem Hunt, even one of his top three games this season in terms of yards gained before first contact. So baffling that they only ran 47 plays on the entire day. It's just, it's bad. And when your opponent runs 70, you're just not going to get there. Jonathan Taylor was bad. I'll take an L here. Um, Phillip Rivers said after the game that he was hurt, but he only ran for 22 yards on 11 carries, uh, two catches on three targets, 5.1 DraftKings points. They gave carries at the goal line to Naheem Hines, Wilkins, and Burton above Jonathan Taylor in this game. I, I just don't think they like him. There's a very real possibility that he's Trent Richardson 2.0. Uh, who knows? Hopefully you got away from him. Hopefully you you did things the right way and played the right players. There's a lot of landmines in week eight. Hopefully you weren't on that one. I apologize for putting him in Best Buys. Probably not going to do it the rest of this year unless the volume completely changes. And I don't think that it's going to based on the way that they're looking at him. Somebody who never, never sees a dip in his volume is Derrick Henry. 18 carries, 112 and a touchdown, 20.2 DraftKings points. Totally fine with that one. Miles Gaskin, somebody I was massively overweight on this week, had way less efficiency, but still did fine with 14.3 DraftKings points. Three catches on six targets, 16 yards through the air, 18 carries, uh, 47 yards only, which shocking, but also not shocking. Tua didn't look amazing in his first game. The defense did numbers, and he just wasn't pulling safeties off the line, wasn't making them do things defensively, and that led to Gaskin being... A little bit less efficient, though he did get into the end zone to salvage it for us with 14.3 DraftKings points for 5.2K. Keenan Allen did Keenan Allen things, caught 9 of 11 targets for 67, and he snuck into the end zone this week, 21.7 points. I'll take a smash there. You guys can spam the smash emote. Brandon Ayuk, 23.1 DraftKings points, 8 catches on 11 targets once they got Jimmy G's butt out of the game 91 yards and a touchdown i'll take another smash emote for that one aj brown eh, not a smash four catches on seven targets for 24 yards and one touchdown we got lucky here uh that he kind of bailed us out at the end uh getting us out of single digits and into 12.4 uh henry ruggs somebody we were coming off of because of the wind in that game we were looking at guys that had much lower a dots as opposed to deeper throws so he was kind of somebody that I was no longer on by the end of the week as much as I liked him throughout the week. Only four targets, pretty predictable, that this was going to be a close to the line of scrimmage game and a rushing script based on the weather situation. The, the goalposts were freaking moving. That's how hard the wind was blowing. Two catches, four targets, eight yards, 2.8 DraftKings points. AJ Green, same situation, a lot of wind. They threw it a ton, didn't look his way as there were paths of lesser resistance uh, at other, other points on the field. Two catches, five targets 19 yards 3.9 DraftKings points he'll remain cheap moving forward and there will be spots that we can find to play him Darren Waller same situation caught five balls on six targets only 26 yards as they were very low a dot throws 7.8 DraftKings points Harrison Bryant three catches three targets 25 yards 4.5 DraftKings points George Kittle got injured this sucked two catches four yards or sorry two catches on four targets for 39 yards he would have absolutely smashed if Jimmy G didn't suck in the first half, and then he didn't get hurt. 
Trey Burton was our best tight end play of the week uh, with a rushing touchdown, three targets, sorry, three catches on four targets, only nine yards, 10.1 DraftKings points for 3.5K. Chiefs, Bills, Packers, Packers and Bills did kind of suck. Four points for the Bills, zero points for the Packers. Looking at my three max lineups on the week, I missed the cash. Cash line was 220. I bubbled at 227 and 280. With a Russ Wilson stack, had DJ Dallas. We spoke on the anti-tinker cast about how I was going to get to DJ Dallas, right? He was not known as the starter beforehand. He was going to be very low played. Nobody was going to have him on their rosters. Uh, so you had to set up a swap, a 1v1 or a 2v2. There was a very direct 1v1. If you use uh, one of the running backs were in that price range, like Tevin Coleman or uh, Latavius Murray. And then if you found out that all the running backs in front of him were going to be out, it was a very easy pivot to DJ Dallas and nobody was going to play him. So I was happy that I got that in there. Williams, fine. Metcalf, smash. Bourne, great. Mims, disappointing that, I mean, 32% played. Uh, unacceptable that he only got three targets in this spot. And they were basically in the first quarter. First half of the first quarter, he had 6.2 DraftKings points and they never looked his way again because they would rather give the ball to Frank Gore a lot when you're losing 28 to 9. It, I'm done. He's he's an idiot. George Kittle getting injured sucked. Tyler Lockett in that double stack here with the Bourne bring back. Packers defense also sucked. That kept me out there, but it was mostly the Kittle injury that hurt this lineup. The other lineup, Jimmy Garoppolo sucked. Kareem Hunt, bad total, good play with a bad result. Uh, this was the lineup where I was trying to smash in a lot of running back plays into this one. Uh, Kittle, Bourne, Mims, Metcalf in this one. Dolphins defense, who ended up being a tremendous play with 23 points. Uh, so I could have cashed two of the three, but I didn't because Kittle kind of held me out of that. The two things that defined my day in 150 max were A, I had 40-something percent of Kareem Hunt who did not perform well uh, on the total. We went over why. And because of the fact that I went completely different this week, typically I don't have more than 10 to 15% of any one quarterback. I try to use quarterbacks as a way to spread uh, different receiver groups and combinations. Because of all the wind and because of all the dropping totals, I really focused a lot of my lineups, 60% roughly, 60 to 65% of my lineups, on Seattle stacks with single and double bringbacks, and uh, San Francisco stacks with single and double bring back. So 30% of the lineups that I had had Jimmy Garoppolo. Those ended up sucking. 30% of the lineups I had had Russ Wilson. Those ended up doing pretty well. But again, Hunt being not good yesterday in a great matchup and with good efficiency. Uh, Jimmy G sucking and then watching his backup pile up points. That sucked. And then both of those things led me to not end up with any Dalvin Cook on the day who was the best play on the Slayer broke the slate. If you did not have him, you could not finish high in tournaments. So those three things uh, held down my tournament lineups. But as you can see, my highest ones were 182, 180, 171. It was basically you had Dalvin or you weren't having any chance to finish high after he had three first half touchdowns in that game. Also, if you had Dalvin Cook, you probably brought it back with Devontae Adams who had three touchdowns on the day as well. So a lot of paths to success. If you found your way to Adams, and or cook, especially if you build lineups the way that we suggest doing it. Looking at my cage match, that's two in a row for me. This is the only game that I played on FanDuel last week. As I played JJ, you can see both of our lineups right here. He said that he was going to make his donation today to No Kid Hungry. So that's two in a row. I'm four and four on the season in terms of these games. We had Devontae Adams in that one. He pivoted as he had Aaron Jones in this spot, pivoted down to DK Metcalf and really made it close because I was running away from him early as all of his early guys really weren't doing much. He did have Alvin Kamara late in the day. Uh, Burrow and Tannehill canceled each other out. Boyd stacked with Burrow was great. Ayuk was great. A.J. Brown saved me late in that game. Jonathan Taylor was terrible. Uh, Darren Waller, whatever. It is what it is. We're on to week nine. We're going to look out for a first look on the main channel. Thank you guys for being here. Drop a like, subscribe. Make sure you ring the notifications bell. And I'll catch you later. Bye. He's a legend.